The last bullet I want to point out here, right? Low performing organizations. Wow. That's a strong one, right? 164% difference between their heroes and challengers. And, mm. and if you're listening as a service leader, that is something that you should really stop, pause and say, how are my top performers doing in comparison to my lower performers? And why are they most costly? Why are they that much? I and mean, that's a dramatic number, right? And the reason why they're more costly, right? It's think about all the things that go into a service call. Um, it's the time, it's the labor, it's the drive time, it's the parts being used, or, or maybe the shotgun approach, right? Um, not understanding the problem, um, and all of that variance between top and low performers is really detrimental to efficiency of the organization, but more importantly, perception of the quality of product and service that you're bringing to your customer. Right. And, and there's inevitable, right? We talk about the A players and the B players in our organizations or, or dividing them. In, in our case, we divide them in thirds. Right. And, and our mission is to take that bottom third and move them up to the middle and the middle to the high mm -hmm. through technology. Right. So you don't have that variance. And uh, it's, it's a tremendous opportunity for, for folks to look at and understand uh, the opportunity within their org within their organization. Yeah, uh, it's something that I've been quite passionate about for a while. In fact, a couple of years back, I did a, a great uh, interview with a chap called Shep Hyken, who's an American uh, customer service specialist, really, really fascinating guy. And we, we kind of jammed out a few ideas uh, on a call like this. And one yep. of the bits we got to is great service is not five-star service every time. Great service is because nobody really achieves that, you know, because right. of expectation management. Yeah. Um, but... You can hit five star, but if the next time you hit two star, That's and then the next time it's three, and next time it's five, yeah. the overall perception from the customer base, customer base is never going to be good. Whereas I, I brought it back to the hotel industry. You know, uh, you always go to a Marriott or a Crown Plaza or whatever chain it is. You know what you're going to expect. It's always that four star. You know that 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 level of service of expectation. Yeah. It's that consistency of service, and I think that's what you're seeing there as well. Like 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 to have such a wide gap, that'll impact the bottom line, like we touched on earlier of, of the service revenue. But you, you're spot on. You know, um, from that customer perception, it's having that consistency and how you. I, I like the way you phrase that. How you bring them from the third tier into the second tier and so yeah. on, consistently raising the bar. Really, really interesting point. Really yeah. interesting. Yep. Yeah, thank you. The next one just kind of puts some numeric values to. Uh, the differences we can kind of brush over that one and, and go to the next one but uh you know essentially right what are we highlighting here that 32 percent boom of difference and what we yeah. see again uh, chris we talked about we're able to see through our data set uh, actual field versus versus remote events and it's inevitable that a lot more remote events have happened and we mm -hmm. see that companies uh, a lot of them in our database as well have adopted technology. And, and really the summary here is, if you haven't adopted technology into your organization to understand the opportunity within your organization to help improve or minimize truck rolls, uh, you're missing out uh, because companies are doing it and they're really improving the role of our services. And what we say, it's, hey, the time is, is now, right? As you said, expectations are, are can continue to shift towards more service revenues. Um, and if you can, improve your services through technology what we're seeing is the better performing companies have those technologies embedded within their organization yeah i, I suppose as we as we draw to the woods the end of the uh, presentation sydney one question i've got for you which which i suppose is going to be on the front of mind for a lot of the people watching this that are seeing their organizations falling into the laggard side of things that perhaps haven't you know we always talk about competitive advantage of of utilizing technology is it's kind of part baked into the lexicon of why we have an FSM or dynamic scheduling or AI or yeah. whatever else. Looking at looking through these numbers, um, do you think that it's more a case that if you don't do this, you're now not just at a competitive disadvantage, but but potentially the I'm just looking at the gulf in some of these numbers. Um, it, it almost seems that those organisations perhaps. Uh, are slightly late to the party um, and there's still plenty of time for those the, those that aren't but that 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 gap is getting bigger and bigger every year having looked at the different benchmarking that you've done um, year on year the gap between the have and the have not seems to be widening 
Um, I'd just like to get spend a couple of minutes to get your thoughts around that, if I can. Okay, yeah, Chris, no, I think uh, thanks for being so perceptive. We have the fortunate ability to look across such a broad data set. And what we, what we have seen is the ones that are performing better have accepted the need to incorporate technology into their businesses. Um, it allows them to be, as we talked about, improve the workforce uh, uh, learning curve. It's allowed them to do more remote resolution. It's allowed them to understand their business through analytics, where they need to focus on and where they need to improve, not only by technology, but also by technician, et cetera. So uh, as you asked, uh, yeah, and I like what you said, it's not too late, right? It's never yeah. too late. Um, but if you don't, you know, get a little more nimble, a little bit more technology adverse, not adverse, uh, accepting, I should say. Um, other companies, be it your competition, who do it will have the advantage to improve and do better services. So uh, it's highly encouraged to look to see what's out there, what fits your organization and best. But it all starts, in my opinion, it's, it's understanding where the opportunities are. You mentioned the word triage. Uh, and, and it's understanding how to triage more effectively. And there's technologies out there like ourselves that are able to help uh, companies execute on, on, on those visions of service excellence, if you will. Hi, I'm Chris Oldland. I'm the editor-in-chief and founder of Field Service News. I hope you found that short excerpt from one of our long-form in-depth interviews of use to you in your role as a field service leader. If you did and you'd like to see more of this type of content, I'd recommend taking a look at FSM Pro Membership. FSM Pro Membership will give you access to over 80 hours and counting of similar types of interviews where you get access to the full length conversation with a whole range of great thinkers and leaders from across the spectrum of the field service sector. You get entire access to our premium content library as well. So you get over 140 resources, um, including white papers, research reports, executive briefings, plus FSN education content. And that's all available for a, a, a very low monthly fee or an even better rate if you purchase an annual subscription. Head over to fieldservicenews.com, look for the link at the top of the page that says become a pro member and you'll find out more all about FSN Pro membership as well as FSN Pro Plus. And you can select which option is right for you. But thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.